reading is responsive prayer to page 285 in your hymnals, but it's mostly printed out in the uh, worship folder for you. Please rise for opening verses. A reading from John. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our midweek Lenten sermons this week conclude as we continue to focus on the objects of Lent and the introits of Lent. And this week, our last object is the nails of the cross, and the introit is from Psalm 116. Psalm 116 is a psalm that was sung by the people of God for generations uh, in celebration of the Passover, and it references the uh, exodus from Egypt and proclaims how God delivers his people from bondage and oppression. It's always easy for us to think about freedom, but it's not always easy for us to mentally relate to an enslaved people or an oppressed people. Since you and I have spent our entire lives politically, racially, religiously, religiously free, living in a democratic society, but enslaved and oppressed people develop a mentality that is passed down from generation to generation, and it's a really difficult challenge. I learned that from a friend of mine in the seminary who was from Eritrea, and he had spent his whole life living under a totalitarian regime. Finally, he escaped walking on foot across the Sudan is how he got out. He broke free from slavery, but he never really broke free from that oppressed mentality. See, see it's one thing to, to wear shackles on your ankles. Those can be removed, no big deal. But it's much more difficult to remove those shackles from your mind. That's the struggle that many African Americans still have in this country. Emancipation is easy to say, but it's another thing to live. 
And of course, it's made all the more difficult by evil people in the world who want to continue to try to oppress the free and who encourage the free to live as victims of oppression. But you and I, you and I all have been oppressed and enslaved at one time. We were oppressed and enslaved by Satan. Problem is, most of us have no memory because we were set free at our baptisms when we were just infants. Look at those nails of the cross. Before those nails fastened our Lord to the cross, they fastened humankind to hell. We were stuck in hell. Our feet firmly nailed to the floor, unable to move, enslaved, oppressed. The psalmist says, the snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. These are the snares of death that encompass Christ. See, in payment for all of us, he substituted himself, his soul, for all of our souls. And as he hung on that cross and suffered the fires of hell, he dissolved the nails that held us to the floor of hell. And when he rose from the dead, he showed Thomas his hands the very marks of the nails in his hands that freed us from Satan, right there in front of Thomas's eyes. We've been free. But, like I said, easy to say. The trick is to believe it. To know you're free in your head? Sure, that's easy. To live as free people, that's hard. Just like white supremacists and others who profit from racial conflict continuously try to tell people of color that they are not equal, that they are not free. So Satan and his minions continue trying to tell us that we are still captives. They want us to believe that we are still hopelessly nailed to the floor of hell and that we can do nothing about it. But that is a complete and utter lie. Look at the holes in our Lord's hands and feet. Remember that you have been freed by the Son and because you have been freed by the Son, you are free indeed. And Satan will continue to whisper his lies in our ears. That's his only combat. He whispers, he tries to convince us that there's some sin somewhere that we've committed that certainly cannot be forgiven. There's some sin that we have not truly and completely repented of. There's some sin because we can't expect to be forgiven because we're still doing it. Those are all lies. When God looks at you, he doesn't see a poor, miserable soul nailed to the floor of hell. He sees his sinless children. He sees his children wrapped in the pure and the holy robes of Jesus Christ. That was the whole point of the nail holes in the hands of Jesus that Thomas saw. Have you ever wondered why in Jesus' resurrected body he still had holes in his hands? His resurrected, pure, and holy, and perfect body still has holes in his hands? Did God just miss something? No. Those were his proofs of purchase. Any time.
time Satan tries to tell you that some sin you've committed is unforgivable, just look at the holes. The hole is in Jesus' hands. Those are the nail holes that prove that you were purchased from hell. That your soul was redeemed from hell. And neither Satan himself nor anyone else can ever condemn you. You are free. Don't ever let liars enslave you. Please rise from curiosity. us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 